Uh, oxygen is one of the fuels that your body uses for energy and hypoxia is the condition where your body doesn't have enough oxygen to function normally and uh, that's manifest when things like your brain uh, start to struggle and stumble and start to shut down. Uh, some of the factors that will affect uh, the way that some people will get hypoxia, uh, the most important factors are altitude and time. So the higher the altitude, the more severe the hypoxia uh, means that you'll experience hypoxia in a shorter period of time. Um, but then some personal factors are things like uh, if you're cold, well then um, uh, your body starts to burn oxygen to generate heat and the oxygen that's burnt to keep you warm isn't available to, uh, to help your brain uh, function normally. And then personal factors like smoking. So if you smoke uh, 20 cigarettes a day, the amount of, of, uh, of hypoxia that your body would, would have would be equivalent to about 5,000 feet. So if you're in a cabin altitude of 8,000 feet and you're a heavy smoker, uh, the amount of oxygen that is being delivered to your brain would be equivalent to about 13,000 feet, and that's an altitude where we would know that you would get hypoxia symptoms. Some other things, um, like if you're uh, physically active, well then your body is using oxygen to make the muscles move. Again, that's reducing the oxygen delivery to your brain. And, uh, and also uh, things like uh, your general state of health and your level of physical fitness can also determine how efficiently your body uses oxygen. And if you're uh, not very physically fit, well then your body uses a lot of oxygen to function, which will uh, lower your threshold for developing hypoxia. But most importantly, uh, hypoxia is insidious because it actually erodes the high mental functions that are useful in helping you to identify and have the critical insight to know that you're becoming hypoxic, which is more difficult when your brain's not functioning properly. Uh, the concept of the hypoxia signature is really there to illustrate to aircrew that individuals uh, react differently to each other with hypoxia, but within an individual it's fairly consistent. And so if you sign your name, uh, we know that that's your signature and you can recognize your signature over many years, even though it might change slightly from sort of one year to uh, years later, but we can recognize that as being your signature. So the hypoxia signature is the, uh, the group of symptoms that you would experience that you would recognize as being your own experience of hypoxia. And it's that hypoxia signature that you would be recognizing during flight that would uh, allow you to identify that you are developing hypoxia and then uh, sort of uh, give you the opportunity to respond to that. Yes, the, the difficulty in recognizing hypoxia is that many people have not been exposed to it before. So uh, that's one of the reasons and goals of hypoxic training is to expose somebody so that they uh, experience the symptoms. Um, the insidious nature of the onset of the hypoxia is because we are using up the oxygen reserve uh, and the oxygen available in the bloodstream progressively decreases as we use up the reserve and there is no magic number or line at which we suddenly become aware of uh, the uh, fact that something adverse is happening uh, to oxygen supply and to brain function. Uh, so the major difficulty lies in the fact that a brain which is already deteriorating in function because of a reducing oxygen supply has to make decisions about the fact that this is happening. Uh, the benefit of, of hypoxia training is it allows air crew to recognise the symptoms of hypoxia early so that they've got more time to take corrective action and they can recognise the symptoms of hypoxia early because they've previously experienced those symptoms in a safe training environment.